Hey everybody, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And we're back today to showcase another deck from this set with the new cards. Uh, it is an older ruler, like a super older ruler, but hey, we're going to showcase her again and see what anything has changed and if it's still any kind of viable. I, I don't know. I, I want it to be, but with the new rulers and all the new stuff, I don't know if it is. Counters are fun. Yeah. Counters but are fun. It's easy, it's simple, and we're going to go through it and just see what it can do. Um, but before we get into it, guys, we just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link is down below. Go check it out. It takes just a dollar to give us some love and support. We greatly appreciate it. And in our Patreon, you'll see access to our Discord. You'll get access to our videos early and all the other fun stuff that we have in there. And don't forget that we actually do have a Force of Will deck building app on Apple and Android. It's called FOW Grimoire. Just download it and we do have a free version where you can create your first two decks for free. And just go ahead and make the list. And with the new set coming up, we are going to put it in there, but it might take a little bit longer this time. We're, you know, we're just all trying to work as hard as we can to get that set up mm -hmm. for you. All right, guys. So the deck is called Building Blocks, and it is with the, with the old girl of Borazuki, the Star Sword Visionary. So we're going to see if she still has any kind of power to deal with any of the new stuff. So a Borazuki, the Star Sword Visionary, for those that don't remember, she is the uh, ruler from the Elder Dragons. Um, judgments of two white, and you pay zero, reveal the top card of your deck, and count the number of light will symbols in the attribute cost. Put X woman counters on this card, where X is the wheel counters you reveal this way. Play this ability only during your turn and only once per turn. And then you can uh, remove X counters from this card and put X counters on an entity you control. Play this ability only during your turn and only once per turn. So you essentially reveal card and then get X counters and then move them to what you want. Yep, just make anything as big as you <clears> want. Which she judgments into a 12-12 flying drain, which is pretty good stats. Yeah. Uh, remove X, remove a counter from an entity you control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on this card. Remove X counters from this card, J resonates your opponent control, get minus X, minus X till the end of turn. So she literally just takes all those counters that she gave out and pulls them all back to her. Yep. And she also pulls any other counters that are just out, any 1-1 one -one counters that are out. So if you have other things that just make counters on themselves, they get those back. And then just bump, just bought the enemy's nose pretty much with mm -hmm. that our first one is of course flute captive dragon child slash slash group of comments this one's an old classic for her so it's a one white one four with a barrier tap produce a white or tap po one one counter on another entity you control and then the chant is destroy all j resonators with no one one counters on them which you know if you just have all counters they don't then done you have one-sided board wipe it's really good and it's free counters. Yeah. Uh, next is Lumia, the Princess of Rebirth and Wings of Light and Darkness. So Princess of Rebirth is a 2-5 for one white. Uh, quick cast, Resonator, enter, you gain life equal to the amount of life you lost this turn in any way. That's good. And then you draw a card, and then the, the Wings of Light and Dark is remove target Resonator two or less from the game, and if you awaken this for one white, you get to play the Lumia instead of putting it in the graveyard. Card is insanely powerful. Yeah. It's still going to be very playable right now because a lot of two drops are everywhere. And there's a lot of burst damage too, so just like into your turn, I gain all that back. Thank you very much. Yeah. Exorcist Mage of the Academy is the next one. It's one white. It's a 4-4 four, four quick cast. This card gains barrier as long as there's a 1-1 one, one counter on it. This Resonator would be put in the field without being played from the hand. Remove it from game instead. So anything coming back from the graveyards or any other way is just like, nope, get out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Dracula, Reborn Vampire, the Jewel of Darkness. Uh, he has one black for a 4-4 four, four flying barrier white. One one counters on this card do not cease to exist if he goes from the field to the graveyard or the graveyard to the field. And then uh, this card is put into the graveyard from the field at the end of turn, return it back to the field with two more counters on it. And then the Jewel of Darkness is a black and six for a chant, quick cast, or sorry, chant remnant. You can flash it back essentially. Uh, it costs one less for each one one counter on this card, and it destroys all J resonators your opponent's control. Yeah, so simple as that. This card is really, really good for this deck. Yes, you don't get any counters when you reveal it, but he gets himself free counters, which it helps you out. Next one, of course, is Graveyard Keeper of the Demonic World. It's a 1-5 with Bane. Whenever one or more counters are put on this card, you gain life equal to its defense. Put a 4-4 four, four. Darkness Zombie Resonator token on the field, and for you just to do that every turn is just uh, pretty good. That's pretty solid. Yeah, this dude just helps you make an army. You're like, hey, yeah. I'm gonna make an army. Make an army, and I gain life, so keep... Yeah. You're, you're protecting yourself in two ways. Uh, Grim and Pandora. This is from the Rebirth of Legends set, which is really cool. It's like something that helps those dudes. Um, two white for a 6-6 six, six Resonator. If one or more counters was put onto this card, put that double that many instead. And then enter this turn, you may activate abilities of a ruler that could be played only once per turn instead. 
or up to twice. Yeah. So essentially, you get to do a Borzuki's ability twice. So it gives you extra counters to put on something else. Extra counters to put on him to double those counters, and you do it again to get double, and then just like yeah. this part, this thing can be a beast, especially as six six for two. Mm -hmm. Next one is Fallen Angel of the Mark. It is a black and white. It's a 2-2 Fallen Angel, flying, enter, draw a card. Who, of course we need that. White, black, one, destroy target resonator, put a 4-4 white light in darkness. Fallen, token, fallen Angel resonator with token flying in the field. This is just super good. And it's sad that we don't see this more because everything is else so fast. But just to pay three and be like, that thing's dead. Yeah. Just Killing a dude, making a dude is pretty strong. And yeah. then you just get to make counters on it. Um, the other card we have now for helping uh, kill creatures is Rayla, the Spawn of the Star. She's insanely strong in this deck. Two white for a 7-7 seven, seven Resonator. When a 1-1 counter is put on this card, choose one. This card deals damage equal to its attack to target J Resonator, yeah. or you gain life equal to the, this card's defense. And then Chant Quick Cast is the uh, Twinkle of the Star. One white. Uh, double. Double all the number of 1-1 one, one counters on each Magic Stone entity of Light Entity you control. Yep. So you get to double all your counters, so you help out a Borzuki do a, like all kinds of crazy on her backside. But to, this one just immediately kills the board constantly if you if you can. Yeah. All right, and we have a Samara Summoner of Spirits slash slash Dance of Spirits. It's a two white five ten, which is super annoying. Flying Resonator. Tap remove X one one counters from this card. Put zero a zero zero light Spirit Resonator token with flying with the X being one one counters. And then quick cast your opponents cannot play spells this turn, which is what until end of turn, which is exactly what you'll be using it for yeah, all you, the time. You pretty much are like, hey, don't play spells. And yeah. right now with the new rulers, this card cripples them. Yeah. Hey, you need to get a J. I'm sorry. Don't do that to this turn. No, no, not going to happen. And like you, it's it's even worse against like the Nyarlathep like pop off deck because you're just like, oh, you played a Red Riding Hood. Don't play spells. Yeah. Don't enjoy the rest of your turn. Yeah. Like. Get, get, get wrecked. On. Yeah, get wrecked. Uh, next up for the last resonator is Hunting Angel. It's two white and two for a 12 12 flyer. Uh, enter, destroy target resonator. Your opponent controls. You gain life because of its defense. Or pay a white, discard this card, destroy target attacking resonator. That's mostly what you're going to be doing this for. It's, it gives you two counters if you reveal it. And then you're just like, hey, cool, kill your dude. Yeah, kill, kill all the dudes. Now we have one of the strongest uh, new additions. It's Keep the Faith. It is one white. Choose one, target resonator gets plus four, plus four flying and drain if you need to, but put target non-magic stone, non-chant card with total cost one or less in the graveyard in the field, or where the hyphen cards do come in the field or one drop. So put the resonator part of the alternate card on the field. And as you can see, we basically just have one drop. So the fact yeah. that you're just recasting these dudes quick cast is amazing. Uh, Grace of the Star, it is one white, quick cast, remnant, target resonator gains plus four, plus four, and if there's one one counter on it, it also gains eternal and bury. Yep. This is a pretty good protective card because you have a lot of dudes that you want to make sure they stay alive, and that's what you need to do. Yeah. Ominous Moon, the Lunar Sword is one black. Quick cast as an additional cost to play this card, remove two one one counters from an entity you control. Destroy target J resonator, players cannot chase this card, and it says J resonator, can be chased, this is what you need. Remove two things on Orborzuki and just that's it. Just kill that thing. Kill mm -hmm. your J Resonator. Uh, Duet of Light. It is two white uh, chant. Choose one. You may choose an additional one for each recovered J rule you control. You gain 2,000 life. Put target magic, non magic stone, non chant uh, card or alternative card three or less from your graveyard into the field. Uh, you only put the creature part in. And then put four counters on each J Resonator you control. So the little uh, one drop demon that makes more dudes. You just make all those dudes huge, yep. and you get to kill them with this one card. <laughs> yeah. Or you get to bring back your Raya and put counters on it at the same turn. So you're like, cool, bring back this Raya, put counters on it, kill your dudes. It, it gets nuts how much, how good this card is for this deck. Or you just gain half your starting life total just with two mana. Yeah. Which And you help. get to choose two as long as you play it right with a Borzuki untapped. Because yeah. you choose one, and then you choose another one because you still have her untapped. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Starlight Canopy is, of course, a super pivotal moment of this deck. It's two white addition. Enter, remove target non Magic Stone, non J Ruler into your opponent controls total three or less from the game, which is pretty much everything. It doesn't come back either, it's just, it's gone. And then whenever one or more one encounters are put on this card, draw a card. Just, you wanna draw a card every turn? You can do it. Okay. And currently, a lot more things are getting eternal, so that card's just gonna be like, hey, no, I don't care. Just remove it. Yeah. I don't care Bye. about your eternal. Uh, the stones are really simple. We're playing Magic Stone of the Six Ages to have the black that you need for the deck. Um, but otherwise, we're just playing White Stones. We're playing Epic Stone of the Star. 
which is her star or her, her stone, which produces a white, or you can put a one one counter on this card, and all that's for is to take away with a Borzuki. But it's better than not u than using a, a basic stone because it it's literally a, does something for you. Yeah, it's an extra bonus just in case in a turn. And then Amadeus, the Holy Crystal, it adds a white, and if you're playing against the Devil Rulers, you get an extra you get a man of any color. Yeah. So we're pretty much just playing white stones or white producing stones and because the whole deck is that minus like four cards but overall the deck seems really fun i think it's gonna be okay and we're gonna see what it can do thank you guys we'll see y'all next time goodbye later make sure you hit that like button guys and subscribe to our channel it would greatly appreciate it also make sure you hit that bell to stay up to date on any of the notifications for our channel and lastly make sure you give us all the comments down below we'll make sure we get them and just to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to subscribe. But for those mythic and above patrons, we like to give you a super thanks. And that would be Ryan and Magic Dragon Games. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We love you.